Hello, I'm Simon Christie and welcome to another big episode of Four Drive TV. We've got a great show lined up, so let's get straight into it. Tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. With the popularity of 4x4s on the increase, it's no surprise that we are seeing a growing trend in 4x4s demonstrating at regional agricultural shows. At this event north of Brisbane, the team from Superior Engineering pulled in a stack of well-prepared four-wheel drives for a spectacular presentation of what modified 4x4s can do. Whilst demos like this may be a tad extreme for some four-wheelers, there is no doubt that it's a positive for the entire four-wheel drive scene and just another proactive facet of our much-loved and expanding lifestyle. Thanks to Shane Gerrish for the footage and his enduring support of the 4x4 scene in South East Queensland. By the time this airs, we will have caught up with Shane at the Brisbane 4x4 show, and better still, Shane will be an important part of our 20 plus team covering this year's Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge. Can't wait for that one. Hi, I'm Dave from Responsive Engineering. Today we're going to run you through the installation of a water watch system. It's a reasonably simple process. When you purchase the kit, it has detailed instructions included and browning bracket kits are available for most common four-wheel drives. Firstly, before we start to attend the fitment, we should consider that cleanliness is very important with common rail. What we're going to do first is we're going to mount the water watch unit and bracket into the vehicle. Then we'll take note of the arrows on the water watch as to fuel flow direction and we'll hook up these hoses, making sure that the hose clamps are nice and tight. This is fitted between the tank and the original filter. So the incoming is going to be coming from the vehicle fuel tank, the outgoing to the factory filter. So water watch ends up in front of the factory filter doing its job of monitoring for small amounts of water. Water watch doesn't affect the flow rate of the fuel, so once it's set in there, it will just monitor the amount of water. Once we get to five, seven mils of water, it will warn you there's water in the system. Next, we'll find an ignition on power source inside the vehicle. Then we'll wire up the relay, the buzzer, and the light. Detailed wiring instructions are included in every water watch kit. 
Now all remains is to bleed the system as per the manufacturer's instruction manual. Start the vehicle, run it idle and check for leaks. And now you have a system which will keep your family safe and potentially save you a lot of money. Once again, I'm David from Responsive Engineering. Thank you. Holden's toughest 4x4 ever has arrived. Introducing the all-new Holden Colorado 7. It comes with seven seats as standard and it's loaded with serious off-road grunt. You'll get three-ton towing and the awesome 470 newton meter Duramax diesel engine, plus an impressive weighting depth and hill descent control, all for the hardcore adventurer. The all-new Holden Colorado 7 is here. Take it off-road at your Holden dealer today. 30 second kitchen, a kitchen in 30 seconds. Fridge slide first. Fridge slide's got 130 kilo tracks in it, so it's nice and tough. Remove the R clip, don't lose it. Drop the pin, leg locker. Kitchen now. Lock kitchen down here. Retrieve the R clip. Lock on here, R clip in. Leg here, leg here. Pull them together. Stove, Billy. How good's that, guys? Couldn't ask for quicker. At Terrain Tamer, we've tried to take all the hard work out of four-wheel driving, so you can be an expert as well as an enthusiast. Our parts interpreters talk fluent four-wheel drive because we're talking with 40 years' experience. We've got all the four-wheel drive parts and accessories that you'll ever need, so you can toss them in the back for cheap insurance. When you're miles from the closest mechanic, you'll appreciate that advice. Terrain Tamer, we talk fluent four-wheel drive. Hello, I am Minh Phan from Vulcan 4x4 Off-Road, Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. Many years ago, there was no off-road in Vietnam. And I wanted to start something because I love off-road. Off-road is my passion. So I try to contact off-road accessory manufacturer around the world. And the first company I contacted was IRB from Australia. When I first met IRB people, they asked me a few questions about off-roading in Vietnam and one of them was telling me about off-road in Vietnam and I look at them and say, there is no off-road. So the IRB guy look at me and say, how do you do this business without a market? I told the IRB guys, you know, I can create off-road, making it from a strain words to a living style to a hobbies and eventually it's become a sport recognized by the government in Vietnam. I'm very lucky to be IRB authorized distributor. IRB is a very good company. I receive a lot of support and of course IRB is a good product. So I always confident to tell my client that you are choosing the best 4x4 product in the world. It has been nearly four years since I've been working with IRB and today I have become one of the largest, if you don't say the, the biggest, 4x4 company in Vietnam. Beside IRB, we also do other brands like Warren, Rigid Light, IBF, High Lift Jack. It's all the good stuff for 4x4. It took me a lot of time to find accessory for my 4x4 car. Very difficult because there was no one selling any 4x4 accessory in Vietnam. So every time I go to another country like Laos, Cambodia, Thailand, I have to carry you know, some accessory. And sometimes it was not right for my vehicle. So that's the waste of money and waste of time. So I started this shop because I wanted to see off-road growing in Vietnam. Nowadays, it's much easier to find something unique for your car compared to what I had in the past. So this business is more than a hobby turned into a job 
uh, into a business. But still, it's my life, it's my passion. I'm very happy to see Upload is growing very fast in Vietnam. I do hope that we, in one year's time, we can establish Vietnam Upload Federation. We could receive more support from the government so that we will have a bigger off-road community. Off-roading is not just a hobby or a sport. We also do a lot of things like charity. You know, in Vietnam, it's a tropical country. So every year we have at least 10 hurricanes hitting this country. And we have a lot of flooded, a lot of damaging, a lot of landslide. And in some remote area, during the rainy season, we have six months of rainy season. It's completely disconnected to the rest of the world. No road, no electricity, and sometimes a loss of life will lost because they cannot bring in the victims to the hospital on time. So one of our duty is to conquer the difficult terrain. So if someone out there need help, like carrying food, medicine, healthcare, or doctor, to a remote area will be on the front line. And we love to do this to help people. I think Vietnam needs more of Rodda who can do more job for the people who need help. If you need more information about what we are doing here in Vietnam, please visit our Facebook page at www.facebook.com slash Vulcan 4x4. In between episodes of your favourite TV show, visit fourwheeldrivetv.com.au for the latest in 4x4 news, links, prizes and videos. Stay in touch with myself and Danny and receive regular updates, promos and photos via our Facebook page. And visit youtube.com forward slash fourwheeldrivetvtube for our latest 4x4 videos. There's three great ways to stay up to date and in touch with our growing four-wheel drive community in between episodes. We last covered the Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge back in 2008 when we featured the event on 4 Drive TV and produced the highly popular DVD. Well it's been a long break for us and new management have led the event in a more positive direction creating an environment more in line with what we think a family friendly event should be. There's also been growing pressure from both the competitors and spectators to have our team back on board and we are very pleased and excited to say that thanks to popular demand, Four Wheel Drive TV will be a major part of the 2013 Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge. Today we are looking at highlights from the 2011 event just to give you a taste of what you can expect to see firsthand at this world class event on the weekend of April 12 to 14. Seeing this event in person is a spectacle many enthusiasts have locked into their calendar annually. Not only are the tracks the toughest you'll find in Australia, but the rigs themselves are astonishing. Huge tyres, innovative engineering, massive suspension flex and even more impressive driving make the Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge a must-see event. As I produce this story, the 2013 event has an unprecedented 61 teams locked in to combat Australia's search for the toughest extreme 4x4. We've never seen a field this big, and I think it's a taste of bigger things to come. I'll be taking a team of 20 plus experienced 4x4 cameramen and ladies, and not only will we have the action on TV sooner than ever before, but we also plan to get the DVD out in record time. Planning and preliminary production from our side has been underway for months and we are so excited to be able to bring you such a unique and amazing event, but better still, we want you to experience the action first hand with us. So how about hitting the mud, rocks, hills and more at this year's Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge. It's an experience you won't soon forget and an absolute celebration of the tougher end of extreme four wheeling. I can't wait 
and I hope to see as many of you as possible cheering from the sidelines. So how about booking in April 12 to 14 this year for the amazing 2012 Tough Dog Tough Truck Challenge. The next generation of shock absorbers is here. Leading the way in 4x4 suspension development, Old Man Emu introduces the most advanced and finely tuned shock absorber on the market. Nitro Charger Sport incorporates a new valving system that instantly adapts to all terrain for an outstanding smooth ride and phenomenal control. Backed by a three year 60,000 kilometer warranty, you can trust Nitro Charger Sport, built in Australia for Australian conditions. Got a ute? Need more space? Need it to be safe and secure? And of course stylish? Then look no further than Carry Boy. Designed with the true lines of your vehicle in mind and the ultimate in functionality, a Carry Boy canopy will transform the look and performance of your utility. For more information on why Carry Boy are the world leaders in canopy design, durability and practicality, visit carryboy.com.au. When you need your manual gearbox rebuilt, don't start in reverse. Get it geared up right the first time with the team from 360 Gearboxes. As Australia's premium gearbox and diff specialist, 360 use the world's best gears, shafts, bearings and seals. 360 offer a guaranteed and quality changeover and A1 customer service. If your manual is grinding, crunching, sticking or blowing, demand the best 360 Gearboxes, a fast, reliable and high quality rebuild. For more info, visit 360gearboxesdiffs.com.au. Hi, my name's Kevin. This is my 1993 GQ Patrol. It's a 4.2 turbo diesel with a three inch system. It's got a three inch suspension lift with a two inch body lift. Running 35 Mickey Thompson MTZs on Pro Comp Rock Crawler rims. It's also got heavy duty front and rear control arms, heavy duty panhard rods. Up the front I've got a custom front bar with a high mount winch running HID spotlights. Also a four inch snorkel with a Toyota Land Cruiser 60 series airbox conversion. Inside I run a iPad with navigation on it. Also has a DVD and full stereo system. Up the rear I've got a custom rear bar with rear drawers and a drop down fridge slide. Had the car for about six years. Pretty much done all the work on it myself. The only thing really left to do on the list is front and rear lockers and a light bar at the front. Other than that, I've pretty much finished everything I've done. I've been building it for about six years, so it's just been a long-term project. Places I like to go, I like to get away with the wife up into the high country camping. We're planning to do a week-long trip up in the high country looking around at all the huts next year. It's a great truck. I love getting away and using it. Gets us everywhere we want to go without too much trouble. If you'd like to join us for our next Your Rig trip, then email myself with your details. Each weekly winner takes home a cap and stubby holder courtesy of all sat phone an any sharp edge sharpener and scissors thanks to Keesler knives a promo pack courtesy of ARB including Forby the plush toy a travel mug a Forby drink bottle the new ARB cap a pair of emergency travel socks the latest ARB jacket and a set of valve caps to bling your rig there's an ARB Penrith stubby holder a pen and cap thanks to Berrimer diesel and DP chip a massive map of Australia, a GDT Simpson Desert map, and Travel Atlas, courtesy of HEMA Maps Australia. A Manel Motors stubby holder, a USB rechargeable torch thanks to Nava, the History of Land Cruiser DVD courtesy of Terrain Tamer, a U-Fixit windscreen repair kit and tyre ratchet set. There's a copy of Dirt Cop magazine, South Pacific Bowhunter magazine, and Wild Deer and Hunting Adventures magazine. A set of the Australian design expander pegs, an up and go breakfast replacement courtesy of Sanitarium, a set of four wheel drive TV medium stickers, a stubby of Bundaberg ginger beer and an Australian designed Aussie drink mate, a Black Widow travel mate tyre repair kit or a Donaldson diesel fuel filter kit, the electric blue span set snatch strap and it's all neatly packaged up in an ARB cargo gear carry bag. 
thanks for checking out my rig and thanks to Simon and Miranda and the Four Wheel Drive TV crew for the invite out today. Thanks to the sponsors for the great Pirates Pack. John from Bitters Four Wheel Drive Unlimited. We're at my workshop today. Let's come inside and I'll show you what we've got going on at the moment. This is a four and a half litre GU patrol we're doing for a customer. We're doing a tappet adjust at the moment. Then we're gonna put it up on the hoist, put uh, four, three diff gears in it and shave the bottom off the H260 rear diff. Here we have a pair of GU diffs and steering box, an upgrade for a semi-competition GQ. We're gonna laminate the front diff housing. We're gonna shave the rear diff housing. We're gonna put diff gears and diff locks in both of them. It should make for a tough car given that the car runs 37s and hopefully he won't be changing axles all weekend when he goes out for a drive. Here we have a GQ turbo straight gas car. We're doing an ignition upgrade and we're converting it from an automatic to a manual. The auto wasn't handling the load and it's more cost effective to put a manual box in than build the auto to a standard that will handle the, the horsepower the car's capable of making. Another GQ patrol here. We've done a, a guard cut front and rear and we're also doing heavy duty rock sliders. The beauty of the guard cut, it enables you to run two inch suspension, two inch body lift and easily clear 37 inch tyres. It makes for a car that drives very well on the road and gives you the big tyre ground clearance under your diffs when you go off road. Here we have a short wheelbase patrol. We're doing a mid wheelbase four link suspension conversion. Again, another turbo straight gas car. We've worked out with a, a fuel tank in the rear we can get 11 inch longer wheelbase out of this car and we do heavy duty rear arms to go with it. A standard arm and the heavy duty arm. So it should handle a lot better with a longer wheelbase, be able to keep the front wheels on the ground better. We're also going to do rear bar work for it as well. We have an 80 series Land Cruiser here, came standard with the, the 3FE motor which is a little bit sluggish when you want to tow a caravan around Australia. So we're doing a 350 Chev conversion. We're also upgrading the brakes to bigger, braver brakes because the early models with the 15 inch wheels had very little brakes on them and they struggled to stop. Here we have another short wheel based patrol. It came to us as an unengineered illegal car. We've since engineered it with the five litre V8 and the automatic. We've done a guard cut, a body lift, suspension kit. We've put a King bolt-in shocker system, which we normally try to keep a set of them in stock because they're very popular these days. And doing new diff gears, new air locker, and building a complete new rear center for the car. Here at Bitters, we also do 80 series rear bump stop conversions for, for Nissan patrols. They are a complete bolt-in setup and they work much better than the Nissan ones, which are basically non-existent. This car has a rear bar done by us, a front bar done by us, and I'm in the process of building rock sliders to replace the existing ones, which are not so flash. Here's a Nissan Patrol distributor. We use them in the, the petrol carburetor motors and straight gas turbo motors. We also run one of these in our mud racer, which revs cleanly to 6,000 RPM. It's basically a full electronic ignition replacement for the points. It gives you like 250% more spark power. It really is one of the best power performance modifications you can do to a, to a carburetor petrol Nissan Patrol motor. Here we have something more Simon Speed, a early FJ40. We've just put a Holden V8 in and a five-speed gearbox, and we've had the engineer out to look at it, and it's, it's very close to, to hitting the streets. Here's another engine conversion we're starting to do a little bit more of. It's a LS series Chev motor into a Nissan Patrol. It's a very expensive conversion, but believe me, it's awesome to drive. This is my daily car. Very economical, very powerful. Car makes over 200 kilowatts at the wheels and it's fully engineered for, for street use. These are our heavy duty rock sliders that we build in house. I believe they're the strongest ones on the market. I've run these for years on my race truck and still bolt on and bolt off. They haven't distorted out of control. Here we have my patrol winch bar jig. I can make a perfectly square winch bar. The only dilemma I have is it's getting harder to find a perfectly square GQ these days to bolt it onto. Well, thank you for letting me show you what we do down here at Bitters Four Wheel Drive.
Hello guys, my name's Sam. This is my 80 series. I've been working on it for about five years. As I said, it's missing a few panels. I've bobtailed the back end to give me a better approach angle for the rear, as well as cut the front end out and move the diff forward so I get a better approach angle. It is quite long, but up and down hills it works really well. Spent all the time doing the internal cage and as well as an external cage. I've got my own bender and what now, so it makes life a lot easier. I've managed to squeeze a triangle ad falling in the rear. Tough dog coils in the rear and shocks, but in the front I've gone to a four link front as well, so triangle ad four link in the front. Red back coil overs, E locker, as well as a 60 series diff. So I got rid of the 80 series front diff just because it was too weak, so I put a 60 series diff in it. Full hydro steer, make it easy to get around the tracks, that's for sure. As well as put a turbo on it to give a bit more torque and power up in the hills, and it sounds great, I love driving it. Belly plates underneath, as well as reduction gears in the transfer case, make life a lot easier. Full internal cage with bucket seats, run three-point harnesses, still a manual gearbox, as well as a custom switch panel inside which controls everything from locker switches to isolators to rock lights, the whole box and dice that's all at my fingertips, makes life easier for wheeling. 40-inch tyres, have 40 inch sticky tyres with external bead locks. 80 series rear diff still, but running an air locker in the rear and just brace the living hell out of it, take a pounding out in the rocks, fishing for tough truck. We play with a lot bigger rocks over there, so looking forward to it. Can't wait to get there. I've competed in the local comps we have in WA. I've had a three, four of them from all around down south, some up north, as well as I do all the four-wheel drive demonstrations just to demonstrate our vehicle. We've got one here. I do the Sydney, the Adelaide, as well as the Perth show, and we've also got one in Geraldton, which is a good show. Look forward to doing it. The guys here are great. We've got plenty of machinery and just build holes, make holes and big obstacles as far as we can get them, basically. Looking forward to the, the trip over to Tough Truck because it is the biggest comp that we compete in. It's all worth it, definitely, to get over there because it is the biggest comp in Australia. Can't wait. We're all looking forward to it, the four drivers and the four navigators because it's an absolute massive event. We all went over last year. Most of us that are competing came over last year and watched, so that gives them a the little tickle to get there and um, have some fun with it. Well, viewers, thank you very much for tuning in for Full Drive TV, your favourite show of the week. I'm Simon Christie, and remember, tread lightly, keep it safe, play hard. I look forward to your company next week.